At a total project cost of $66, I want to show you how to get a 240 volt outlet installed in your garage. Specifically, we'll be installing what's called a NEMA 14-50, and this is becoming increasingly popular with the popularity of electric cars and wanting to charge at home on something other than a standard 120 outlet. Now, even if you're not gonna take this on as a DIY project, having this little bit of knowledge is gonna help you work with your licensed electrician so you can keep your project costs to a minimum. Now, first up, go ahead and take a look at your panel. What you're gonna to wanna to see is additional capacity because you're gonna need two of these slots as we're putting in a two pole or 240 volt breaker. Here, I have eight slots, so I have plenty of room. Additionally, take a look at the brand of the panel that you have. Most commonly in my area, Square D is what you're looking at, but this one's actually a Cutler Hammer. It's a little bit older, 1980s electrical panel. Still can be serviced and updated. It's just Cutler Hammer was purchased by Eaton. So the Eaton CH series is the type of breaker that I need to purchase for this project. So just a heads up, if you guys have been doing any projects in 2021, 2022, you know some electrical parts are a little bit hard to come by. For instance, this Eaton CH series, the 50 amp two pole that I'll be using on this project, Home Depot didn't have it, Lowe's didn't have it, Menards didn't have it, so I had to go to the local supply house, and fortunately they did have it. So plan ahead, if you got a couple days before your project, you might wanna just get that in order, maybe check your local inventory, or just buy it on Amazon so you have it Thursday or Friday, so you can knock that project out on a Saturday. First up, I'll go ahead and remove our cover from the panel. And now go ahead and apply some pressure as, as we remove that last screw to make sure the cover doesn't fall back into the panel as we're removing it. And then we'll go ahead and pull that away from the bottom and then remove. Now the choice is yours. And again, I'm just a DIYer showing you my experience, but I would recommend you hit the main disconnect and then that will turn off any of your power but do remember, you still have your main conductors coming into the top, and those are still going to be energized from your meter base. So let's run through the supplies quick and their associated cost that kind of adds up to that $66 project cost. Here's where I really saved the money. Because the outlet will be so close to the panel, all I needed was four feet of 6-3. So that's six gauge with three conductors and a ground wire for the wire. So saved a ton on wire costs or copper costs, especially if you're trying to locate this across your garage or have to make a long run. Then we have the Eaton CH two pole 50 amp, and that was at a cost of $30. We have a four inch metal electrical box, two and one eighth deep with a mud ring, and then a metal face plate, all that running you about $10. Then I'm gonna use two three quarter inch connectors and then the NEMA 14-50, $2 for the connectors, $9 for the NEMA 1450. Now that adds up to the 66, but I did buy this for the project at $30 and I'll show you why I got this and where you can get one as well for your own projects. So I wanna cut out the electrical box hole and I'm gonna mark what I think is the stud location at the height off the floor where I want the box mounted. Now I'm gonna outline half of the box and then with my jab saw, I'll start to cut, again, half of the box. Why am I doing half? Because I wanna cut that vertical line and then start cutting the top and bottom lines, but not go all the way across because I want to confirm first that I'm right on the edge of that stud so I don't get done cutting my hole out and then find out I need to shift over half of an inch which might then give me a gap when I put the faceplate on. So I did confirm the stud is in the right location. So I'll just take that box, trace out the rest of it, and then quickly cut the remainder of the drywall out with the jab saw. Do a quick fit and confirm. Looks good. Now we'll go into our panel. We need to get that three quarter inch connector in place. What I'm gonna do is um, that hole that's basically already starting to be punched out, I wanna take that blank out of there so I can come up under with the connector. I'll show you how to do that. Because this can be a little bit tricky on how to get that connector secured to the wire and also tightened onto your panel. 
So I laid out my wire to know how much wire I actually need in the panel, and then I'm going to mount the connector on the wire and tighten it down. Once it's tightened down at that location, then I can feed the 6.3 Romex up through that hole, and then I'm gonna pull that wire connector threads up through into the panel. Now once you have that, you take the nut and tighten it on those threads and give it a few taps with your flathead screwdriver to tighten everything up. Then similarly for the metal electrical box, I'll first position a clamp on the wire and then position the box inside the wall. Might need a little negotiation here, especially because the drywall hole is pretty tight to the box. So shoot a hammer to tap it into place. Then once I get it in place, I'll position two screws off the front now that will want to pull it back in. So I'm going to do one more screw on the back to secure everything up and make it solid inside that space. Then we'll put the nut on the inside and tap it numerous times to tighten everything up. So I also installed the mud ring and then cut off the insulation so we can see all of our conductors and our ground wire. You want to make sure you have at least six inches of wire from the end of your insulation to ensure you're meeting code and have enough wire to work with. And then also one thing not to forget because I have forgot this before, I'm going to install a 10 gauge pigtail to the metal electrical box to make sure that this is bonded or grounded. And then I'm going to tie this in with a WAGO 3 wire. This is actually a 613. The difference in this one uh, from what I usually use is that this can handle 10 gauge wire. So I have a few of these in my kit. Uh, obviously, most of the woggers that I carry are just, they max out at 12 gauge. So I'll go ahead and bring the ground coming from the 6.3, the ground coming from the pigtail, and then this pigtail that will actually go out to the NEMA 1450. I'll tuck all these guys back in. And then we'll just have that one ground coming out that will hook into the outlet. And then last thing, I showed you that $30 additional piece in the supplies. This is actually a torquing screwdriver. So I can adjust the torque in inch pounds to match the spec on the 1450 NEMA outlet and what the screw terminal should be tightened down to. That gives me confidence to know I'm installing it correctly. And there is actually, especially when dealing with stranded, something you need to be careful about, which I'll show you here in a minute. And then also your breaker will have an inch pound call out for those screw terminals. So the challenge is if you're gonna go down to your home improvement store or electrical supply house, you're spending hundreds of dollars on one of these for 30 bucks. Uh, obviously this is not gonna last you if you're a pro, but for somebody like me, that's only really using it a couple times a year. Uh, the $30 price tag is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. So you can find a link in the description to all the different supplies, but also our Amazon store. In the Amazon store, a bunch of different categories. One is the electrical section, and you'll find tools like this recommended for DIYers to help you out with your projects around the house. So first up, I'll just get all the wires on each of the individual screw terminals. This top one being your ground. The sides are either one of your conductors. Red can go on one side, black on the other, or you can switch them around, it does not matter. And then the neutral would go in the bottom. Now again, I'm just getting these tightened down and in place, but I'm gonna go back through with the torquing screwdriver and make sure I get the 20 inch pounds. And also the key is because these are stranded wires, you wanna torque it down till it clicks, then you wanna work those wires and move those strands around and then torque it again. Do that three, four, five times before you're confident that everything's torqued correctly. Then once you're ready, you can start working with that six gauge it's gonna be a little bit hard to get back in that box, but just take your time, don't damage the conductors, and then let the actual four mounting screws help you pull that outlet back onto the mud ring. So now at the panel, we'll wanna get our neutral, our two hots, and the ground wire all broken out so we can start to run those. First up, I'm going to do my ground and then my neutral. 
So I get my rough path, get the screw terminal I'm looking at on the left hand side bus bar. And remember, this is the main panel. So my neutrals and my grounds are coming together on a common bus bar. If you're trying to install this from a sub panel, just keep in mind your neutrals and your grounds should be separate and only coming together at your main electrical panel. Now I'll do a little pre-bend there and then feed up my neutral up to get it into the bus bar, tightening everything down before moving on to these hots. So now I'll cut those to length. This is measure twice, cut once. You don't want to cut those too short. I will get those wired and tightened into the breaker off of the bus. And then I'll tighten that down and go to 40 inch pounds. On the side of this breaker, it'll have a reference by wire gauge to what your torque spec should be. So now we'll do our checks here. Turn our multimeter on voltage. We'll go across the ground pin to one side. 123, looking good. Ground pin to other side, 123 as well. Checking ground to neutral, nothing. Then we'll check across the two phases, expecting 240 and we get 246, so we're good. So a couple hours of your time and about $66 of material cost, and now you get a new NEMA 14-50 outlet in your garage. Take advantage of most charging stations will either have an 18 foot, 20 or 24 foot cord. So you can strategically place your 240 volt outlet saving on that cost because you're gonna get the longer cord either way. Let's say if you're going with a Gen 2 or Gen 3 Tesla wall charger. Now, if you need to get a 1450 somewhere else in your garage and you want to do that through conduit, we also did a video on that. So you can check that one out right here and it'll walk you through the complete procedure where locating right next to your panel is not convenient and you need to get it across your garage. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.